Hello, this is another one of my videos on an old essay I wrote, Sociological Theories Regarding the Emergence and Development of New Religious Movements. This one dealing with plausibility and millenarianism, which I'll continue in the next video. So we've already discussed various psychological theories regarding the emergence and development of new religious movements. We then moved on to talk about various crisis theories for the emergence of religious movements, including crises of survival, social potency, and of meaning and psychic fulfillment. And uh, now we're in towards the end of the section on ideological contexts. By way of context, let me say that crises of meaning do not occur in a symbolic vacuum. Systems of religious belief and practice which embody symbolic meanings have a traditional reality which pre-exists the individual human subject who encounters them. Such traditional reality imposes its own constraints. Even the religiously creative individual innovates strictly within a given framework. Uh, I'll give the reference uh, below, but after I wrote this essay, uh, a big book on millenarianism came out by Catherine Wessinger, uh, Oxford, the Oxford Handbook of Millenarianism. There's an essay in there by me. So uh, let's now turn to plausibility and millenarianism. Given the great diversity in the cultural and ideological expressions of millenarianism, ranging from primitive Christianity and the cargo cults to the Taiping Revolution and the Jehovah's Witnesses, it's been proposed that the concept should be rejected as a unitary category. Yet, for all its ambiguity of expression, millenarianism remains an ideal form of religiosity to be considered in relationship to crisis. By its clear and radical rejection of the existing order of things, it may be seen as an expression of extreme discontent, the ultimate expression of the perseverance of human hope in the midst of adversity and hopelessness. The actual occurrence of millenarianism is related to more than just conditions of crisis, however. One factor of evident importance is the pre-existence of a tradition of millenarian beliefs. Thus, for example, Judaism has a long tradition of both messianic expectation and the occurrence of actual millenarian movements, the tradition only crystallizing at the end of the Maccabean period in the century before the first outbreaks of millenarianism took place. Similarly, well-established but less continuous millenarian traditions are found in those religions which sprang from Judaism. Indeed, both Christianity and, more questionably, Islam have been regarded as originating in the specific circumstances of Jewish millenarianism. In Christianity, the accession of ecclesiastical power and the establishment of Christianity as a state religion of the Roman Empire led to an attenuation of the original millenarian tradition in the metaphysical and allegorical interpretations of church leaders such as Augustine. Apocalyptic doctrines were declared heretical and all but ceased to form part of Christian discourse until the revival of apocalyptic speculation by Joachim of Fiora in the 12th century. Correspondingly, in the period between Augustine and Joachim, European millenarian movements were largely unknown becoming frequent only after Joachim and continuing until the late 17th century, when a new post-millennial theology found increasing favour. Developed after the ending of the European wars of religion, at a time of growing confidence in science and enlightenment, post-millenarianism confidently expected the gradual establishment of the millennium through human progress and achievement, rather than divine intervention. Only with the violent uprooting of much of the old European order in the late 18th century did the earlier apocalyptic pre-millenarianism again become significant and a major millenarianism again emerge. Thereafter, both pre- and post-millennial traditions coexisted 
the millenarian movements of the mid 19th century and their recent more sophisticated successes, drawing their main inspiration from the pessimistic tradition of pre millenarianism. In the modern age, both Judaism and Christianity have increasingly tended to reflect secular themes, so that political millenarianism in these traditions is now almost unknown. In contrast to the Judeo-Christian traditions, the tradition of Islamic millenarian activism remains potent. As in Christianity, Islamic religious leaders early sought to restrict and de-radicalize their millennial traditions, succeeding in imposing their control over most of the central Islamic lands. The Muslim leaders were unable to gain total control, however, and radical millenarian beliefs spread and gained wide currency amongst the early religio-political opposition groups and later amongst various tribal peoples whose incorporation into successive Islamic states remained partial. Actual millenarian movements were almost wholly confined to these redoubts of the millennial tradition, occasionally becoming sufficiently powerful to invade the lands of the Orthodox and establish their own regimes. Outside of the Judeo-Christian Islamic religions, no comparable millennial tradition is extent apart from in Zoroastrianism. However, millennial or potentially millennial ideas are found more strongly in some cultures than others. And generally, it is in these cultures that non-Judeo-Christian Islamic millennial movements have mostly occurred, as on the basis of Amerindian prophetic shamanism, Chinese Buddhist Taoist heterodoxy, or Javanese syncretism. In cultures in which there is little basis for millennial, millennial ideas, such as most of those in sub-Saharan Africa, or amongst the Afro-Brazilians, or in the dominant Indian Hindu tradition, indigenous millenarianism has been almost entirely unknown. The millenarian movements of Africa stemming almost completely from the introduction of Christianity or Islam. In a general way then, there appears to be a definite link between the strength of a particular tradition of millennial belief and the incidence of actual millenarian movements. In the case of the major religious traditions, there's a clear contrast between the Western religions of Judaism, Christianity and Islam, all of which have both a strong tradition of millennial beliefs and numerous examples of actual millenarian, millenarianist movements. And the Eastern religions of Hinduism, Buddhism and Confucianism, in which millennial beliefs are more weakly articulated and the incidence of millenarianism is much lower. More particularly, it is Hinduism, the least millenarian of the major religious traditions, which has least inspired millenarian movements. Whilst in Christianity there seems a clear linkage between periods in which millenarian speculation is common and those in which actual movements develop. Beyond this general linkage, however, the presence or absence of a tradition of millennial belief is clearly inadequate as an explanation for the actual occurrence of millenary movements. As Sharok observes with respect to medieval Judaism, messianic and millennial beliefs may be normative and yet actual millenarianism only occurs sporadically, an observation which may be extended to other instances of a strong millennial tradition. Clearly, millennial belief is not a sufficient cause of millenarianism. Whether or not it is the necessary cause is more problematic. Uh, if, as is often the case, the presence or absence of a millennial tradition is judged purely in terms of official documents, then it's not. Millenarian doctrines may be regarded as inadmissible by the Catholic authorities, but millenarian movements have nevertheless emerged within Catholicism. Normative Theravadan Buddhism may be highly unconducive to the emergence of millenarianism, but such movements still occur, whether as a result of the continuance of a substratum of popular millenarian beliefs coexisting with the official religious ideology, or through the adaptation 
of other existing beliefs, so imbuing them with millennial meaning. If the tradition is judged in terms of both official and popular beliefs, on the other hand, then it would seem that the prior existence or contemporary availability of some sort of millennial doctrine is a necessary condition for the emergence of millenarian movements. After all, whilst new religious movements may well be highly innovatory in the particular doctrinal mixture which they adopt, they remain part of their social environment. Any new religious appeal must be presented to, or rather received by, would-be adherents in terms which they can understand, a familiarity with and acceptance of millennial ideas makes a millenarian appeal at least plausible. The total absence of such ideas does not. The key issue here is the matter of plausibility. Millenarian movements presumably only occur when those involved in them find the urgent expectation of a supernaturally derived worldly utopia a plausible proposition. At an intellectual level, such expectation is only possible if the possibility if of such a supernaturally derived utopia is admitted, and such an admission is necessarily dependent on the conceptual resources available. As between the Western and Eastern religious meta-traditions, these resources go deeper than merely the strong articulation of millenarian ideas in the West and their weak articulation in the East. I'll continue with this in the next video. So many thanks to you for listening and particular thanks to my patrons for their kind support and encouragement without which I wouldn't be able to make these videos. Please do uh, support my channel if you want. Uh, like, comment and share on the videos. Uh, subscribe if you want to notify the future videos. Ring the bell button. Patreon and PayPal links below if you want to provide practical support. Next week we'll talk about plausibility and uh, millenarianism. Uh, can I apologise again for not giving you the uh, actual titles of the various authors I'm referring to in passing in the video or my papers are boxed up at the moment and I can't access them. Uh, if you want to know more about millenarianism, uh, the book I referred to is very good and I'll, I'll give the link to that uh, below. I should at some point, if I have time, make a series of videos on uh, various millenarian movements. It's a very interesting uh, and complicated topic. Um, Anyway, have a good day.